unfortunately at this time crying i'm afraid i have some bad news sobbing we won't be moving forward with your i am on the floor i have been rejected every which way a lot of times countless times in the past five years i have been rejected from what i thought were absolute dream jobs like i think i was made to do this job jobs i have been ghosted more than i can count by cold pitches and i count those as rejections especially if i know that they have seen it like i can see that they saw it and they didn't respond and yeah rejection is really hard i used to struggle with it a lot more than i do now i still kind of do i am a very big like people pleaser so rejection always feels like someone's like stabbing me in the heart and like twisting the knife and I take it so personally and Max my partner would always be like just stop thinking about it let it go and I literally did not know how to do that I would think about it all day long I would be so upset so today I want to talk about that because I don't think people talk about it enough let's talk about rejection today let's talk about how to handle it and work through it some of my best tips and what I have picked up on with my vast experience with rejection <laughs> Hey, my name is Dana, freelancer, digital business manager, and most recently, entrepreneur. And as always, you can find sections on the play bar below if you want to skip to a certain part of the video. Your time is precious, so take what you need. And if you want to watch me on 2x, I won't be offended. Okay, let's dive into the video. So the first thing that I always recommend when you do get like a fresh rejection is actually give yourself time to be upset. Like take that time to process that feeling. I feel like a lot of times people tell us like, oh, just, just let it go. Like forget about it. It's not important. And it's like, you're not really allowing yourself the time to grieve something that you actually really wanted. So sit with the feeling first, instead of like suppressing and avoiding, you know, and in this process, when you're sitting with it, really be careful of your self-talk. Like don't let it spiral. What I love to do is imagine a friend is going through this instead of me. And what, what would I tell this person? Right? Like I would tell her probably like, don't worry, like you are totally valid into these feelings, but you are amazing. Like, I know you're amazing. This does not define who you are at all. This is just one small blip. Like rejection is a common stepping stone for many people who are on their way to big things. So, you know, take this time to be sad, but we're going to pull you out of this after a while, you know? And what I like to do is also make a little rejection ritual for myself. So mine is that I get to have Oreos. I don't normally let myself have Oreos because I love <laughs> using my, like I have crazy eyes. I love Oreos. If I ate Oreos all the time, it would become a huge problem in my life. So my rejection ritual is I pout, I go to the store, I buy like a small pack of Oreos, I sit on the couch, I think about how sad I am and how perfect I would have been at that job, and I eat an Oreo. So rejection doesn't seem so bad after a while because I know that I get to have something great. It's kind of like my cheers to myself for even trying. So when I first started freelancing, I was getting rejected a lot. So I only let myself have like one Oreo per rejection, but over a while I got less rejection so I could have like two Oreos per rejection. So that's something that I love to do. The second thing I highly recommend is creating or reviewing your good stuff folder. A good stuff folder is essentially a folder of every single nice thing anybody has ever said to you in your personal or business life, everything that ever made you smile, that cheered you up. I screenshot it and I immediately put it into my good stuff folder for a rainy day like a rejection day is because most of us have a negativity bias, which means we tend to over fixate on negative things. That's why if like 40 people say, oh my gosh, that was awesome. Good job. And one person was like, that was subpar or I expected more. You like hyper focus on that one person who said it was subpar, but that's not fair to yourself because that's not the reality of the situation. So if you don't have like a good stuff folder, make one now. Every time you see something or get something that makes you happy, cheers you up, screenshot it, into that folder it goes and review that folder when you need to. Like that little pick me up, that reminder that you're actually awesome. And this is just one small piece of feedback in this long, amazing journey of your life. The third thing after a rejection, which I know is a hard thing to do, is ask for feedback. This is an invaluable thing at this stage. Some people won't respond when you ask for feedback. That's okay, but ask for it anyway and insist on honest feedback. I know it hurts to ask for feedback because you're kind of like opening yourself up to get double rejected, but it will help you get better so much faster. Like you would rather know if there's something seriously wrong with your resume or your application assets after the third rejection rather than after like the 300th rejection because yeah if you make those little tweaks along the way you will increase your conversion rate every step of the way instead of you know being like well i don't know what's wrong so i'm just going to keep sending this out so definitely make sure you always 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 ask for feedback that i know it's a hard thing but do it it, it will help you get so much better and faster than everybody else the fourth thing that I think is really important to do is celebrate that you actually try like you gave it a shot because now you know and I don't know about you, I don't know if this is a me thing, but I personally love closure. If I don't like close the loop on something, I can't really let it go. Like my mind just keeps going over and over it. 
about it. And that's the great thing about rejection. Like you actually get closure. It's kind of like a painful <laughs> blessing because it allows you to close that loop and the mental space that this thing was taking up can now be used for something else and you can like actually let it go. So rejection is kind of like a short term pain and regret from not trying is like this long term slow pain. It's like discomfort, right? Like rejection, I kind of imagine it as like a quick paper cut and regret is like this ugly, horrible, long term festering, oozing, thing blob instead that won't leave you alone because you don't know and i truly believe like rejection is better than regret regret lasts so much longer than rejection and another thing i do to give myself like an extra dose of closure is after asking for feedback i just delete the rejection email like bye it's gone you know it doesn't exist anymore it's finished now i'm gonna move on to my next thing and when my students tell me you know i was rejected from my job my immediate reaction is always like first of all that's fantastic like i'm so glad you tried i'm proud of you like i'm never thinking oh man like you suck that's so embarrassing i can't believe you rejected i i, I would never think that about somebody i'm always thinking good for you like good for you for getting out there because if you don't get out there you'll never know. And you know, your dream job might be waiting for you, but you might be holding yourself back so much from even trying, you're not getting a shot at your dream job, right? And I always think it's a bigger concern if someone has never been rejected. If you've never been rejected, it means you're probably not putting yourself out there enough. You're not giving yourself a fair chance. So it is actually a red flag if you're not getting rejected. It's a green flag if you have gotten rejections, because if you're getting rejections, it means you're on your way to becoming better and to getting those acceptances. Number five, this kind of helps um, those of you who are a little bit more emotionally sensitive, like myself, is remembering that it's about the numbers. Um, I detach kind of like the rejection from myself by looking at it logically as a math formula and a numbers game instead of something so personal to me. And, you know, recognizing that there's so many factors that go into hiring, like the job description, the team culture, company style, like the hiring person's own biases and preferences. If someone knows someone on the hiring team, like you cannot control all of those factors. And consider the fact that a job might be getting hundreds of applications, right? The odds of you getting that job sometimes is just really low and that's okay, right? It's unrealistic to expect a yes to every application you send out. Even the most incredible freelancers, the most incredible talent on the market, they do not have a 100% conversion rate. So set fairer expectations for yourself instead of these like unrealistic, perfect expectations. Begin tracking the responses and see what conversion rate you are happy with. And that's gonna be so much more realistic. So for example, for my business, everyone who goes through and watches my free class, only about three to 4% of them join my bootcamp program. So of a hundred people that see my option page and think this may be interesting for them, three or four of them actually join my course. So I could actually take those 97 people to be 97 rejections, right? And for some time I did, I looked at all these people in my email system and I was like, why aren't you buying? Like, what did I do wrong? Is it me? Of course it's me. <laughs> and chances are, it's just not like people have tons going on in their life and on their end. So look at it as math. What rate am I converting at? And how can I make these small tweaks and optimizations to convert better? And you know what? You only need a few. You don't need a hundred clients. Like you just need one or two to begin. Then it will go faster. I promise it will snowball. The next thing is knowing that nobody can define you other than yourself. This is just like a generally good thing to know about your life. One rejection, one person's opinion, even hundreds of rejections, hundreds of people's opinions has nothing to do with you, who you are, your self-worth, your worth is inherent to you. It cannot be taken away from you. That's a very important reminder. And seventh, this one is something I'm practicing a lot is draw the line between what you can actually control and what you can't. So like write down what you can do. Like for example, I can make my resume better. I can have somebody review my portfolio and give me feedback. I can ask for feedback when I get rejected. I can send out more applications. That's like what you can control, right? But what, what can't you control? The response of the job itself, the hiring person's opinions about whether you're the right fit, um, anything else that is out of your control. And all you can focus your attention on and all you should focus your attention on is this side, this bucket of things you can control. And this stuff, this stuff you just have to let go. And I promise that if you just do this to the best of your capabilities, if you stay consistent with it and be patient, good things will happen. Good outcomes will come your way if you are progressively just trying to make yourself better, improve, optimize, and never take yourself out of the game. Just keep going even though I know it is very hard, which leads me to my next point. Know that it won't be like this forever. It's normally just like this because you're just starting. So keep yourself in the game. Don't give up too early and you can kind of like treat it like a game. I promise if you've gotten like a hundred rejections and you've asked for feedback and tried your best every time, you are light years ahead of the person who hasn't tried and hasn't ever been rejected. And honestly, when I look back at all these rejections that I've gotten, I'm so grateful. They were painful then, but I'm so grateful for them now, like months and years later when I zoom out, they really got me to where I am today. I know like if you've been freshly rejected, it won't feel like that right now, but I promise you one day you will be grateful. 
If you've been rejected from a job, like let us know below. Wear it as a badge of honor to be like, I'm in the game. I put myself into the field and that is so, so brave. I honestly think we need to be more honest about the fact that rejection is common and we all get it. It's not something that only you experience and should somehow be embarrassed by. There's nothing embarrassing about attempting and pursuing something exciting for your life. So bravo for you if you got rejected. Take some time, find a little rejection ritual for yourself that's fun and exciting. And regardless of any of that, I am so proud of you for getting out there. And that's it for today's video. I hope it was helpful and I will catch you in the next one. Thanks for hanging out as always, bye.